Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTE 211 week seven assignment. Uh, this is going to be going over the 1911 uh, advanced armor course. This week we're going to do more trigger work. Even though we did a lot of trigger work last week, we're going to do some more trigger work. And then we are going to um, do some functions checks and finally uh, discuss or implement some possible upgrades. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. First, to ensure the firearm is clear, you remove the magazine, lock the slide to the rear, visually and physically check the chamber, this firearm is clear. We need to get a baseline on the trigger work that we've already done. So this trigger that's in there right now is the Wilson Combat Ultralight Match Trigger. Uh, we polished it in last week's assignment. We also kind of did the rails and everything else. I would have normally considered this done, but we need to do some more trigger work here. So um, I checked off camera. You get the same trigger pull if you put the hammer back as whether or not you rack the slide back. So I'm just gonna push the hammer back I'm going to clear my gauge here and then so we're at four pounds 12 ounces we'll get three here right in the middle four pounds 14 ounces and one more time four pounds, eight ounces. So right around between four and a half and four pounds, 12 ounces, uh, 14 ounces. So we'll just, we'll call it four pounds, 12 ounces. Um, one thing you need to note is that you need to have something to hold the grip safety down. I'm using a little piece of Velcro. And uh, when you're doing this and you need to ensure that when you're testing your trigger, this one's easy because it has the three dots. So I just lined it up with the middle dot each time. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing to consider when we are uh, looking at a trigger is the function of the firearm. For example, if this is going to be a competition shooter, you may get that trigger down to super lightweight. If it's going to be a daily carry, you may not want that same lightweight. So um, we have to determine, and you know, through the lessons we've learned that messing with the trigger could have legal ramifications as well. So I'm not gonna discuss what a safe weight of the trigger is or what we're aiming for. Um, but I can tell you, you know, uh, that at the six pound limit, this was probably a little heavy on the trigger. So I'd like to get it kind of to that f closer to the, f the four pound limit. Uh, which is what Rock Island advertises their triggers are four to six. So if we can get this to four, I think that that would be great. So let's go ahead and uh, disassemble this. Okay, so we're down to the only thing left in here is the trigger that we put in last week. Again, this trigger has already been polished. Um, we've already adjusted it and everything so what we're looking at is how does it feel in these tracks right here, which compared to the factory trigger that was in here, this is just super, super smooth. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, for the sake of this assignment, we're going to grab our track stone and we are going to go in here uh, into these tracks right here. You can see right here on either side. And we're basically just going to deburr these tracks and smooth and polish these out as much as we can. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at in the fire control group is the hammer and sear connection, which we addressed last week, but we'll go ahead and go over again. Uh, to get this, you could take uh, some drill bits that get the measurements from the pins, and then uh, you can put those into the holes. That will allow you to drop the hammer and sear on here, and you can evaluate your connections, which we already evaluated our connections. 
um, and we've already kind of gone through and cleaned up these with the files or what. Um, without having the proper jigs to get the exact uh, angles, I wouldn't do much more than buffing and cleaning this. Once you get the jigs, uh, then you could basically go through and, and be able to get those uh, angles exactly perfect. Um, but either way, so that's another component that we'll address. So we've got hammer and sear. We've got the trigger. Next thing we're going to look at is this spring. Okay. Uh, if you are looking at the spring in this direction, this center spring right here uh, is your sear spring, which is going to affect your trigger pull weight. Um, the further out it is, the more, the less the, um, the weight is going to be. So you want to be careful with that. Um, the further in it is, the stronger the, the, um, trigger pull is going to be. So if we just take this and kind of just bend that just, just a little bit here so that it's just, just a tiny bit in that direction. So now we're kind of in that middle, middle category there. Um, we can put this all back together and kind of check and see where we're at now. All right. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and test here. Same thing. Hit our ready button, go right into the middle. Five, four point five, four point six, four point four five. So now we're sitting around that four point four, four point five realm. So I'm happy with that compared to where we started out last week. Um, where we started out last week, we were at like five point, I think 5.6 was the average. All right, so aftermarket parts and um, alterations that we've made. Obviously, we swapped out the uh, modified factory grips with these newer, they're a little bit fatter grips and uh, they have a lot more grip texture to them. Then we also swapped out the trigger with an aftermarket match grade trigger. We gave it an extended slide release and an ambidextrous safety. And we are going to replace the downswept uh, beaver tail with an upswept beaver tail and swap out the hammer as soon as that gets here this week. So that will complete the alterations that I plan on making it to it for now. Um, in the future, I may swap out the sear and the uh, hammer or swap out the sear since I'm swapping out the hammer, but we'll see how those two components interact when they get here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and complete a functions check. For the functions check, we're going to be using dummy ammunition uh, snap caps. We're going to load those into the firearm. We're going to rack the slide, which will show our feeding and chambering. We're going to place the weapon on safe. Now, with this, we're going to pull the trigger. Nothing happens. We're going to push in this. Nothing happens. And when we depress the safety and the grip safety, we should be able to hear the or we should be able to see the hammer drop. We're gonna keep trigger pulled. We're going to uh, rack the slide to the back to the rear, which should do our extracting and ejecting. Uh, we've got our feeding and chamber. If you listen for the reset, reset. Okay, now same thing, we're going to fire. And finally, on the last one, we're going to hope that the slide locks to the rear after the fire which it does. So now this is fully functioning with all of the modifications having been made. And that completes my week seven assignment.